every project is different every project is unique some projects are low complexity projects some projects are medium complexity projects and some projects are high complexity projects so you cannot create one set of process that can satisfy the needs of all the projects so based on the complexity of the project the projects can have different type of life cycles the, the life cycles of the project can be categorized into three categories predictive life cycle iterative life cycle and adaptive life cycle now there are certain projects where you can easily predetermine the scope right from the beginning you know very very clearly what has to be done such projects will have predictive life cycle they can be delivered in a single delivery stage if we talk about projects such as uh, if a surgeon let's say perform any surgery such as bypass surgery kidney transplant surgery or let's say knee replacement surgery the surgeon is very clear about what he has to do from start to end based on anatomy of the patient so for such projects we can have single delivery stage to deliver the project With, within the same delivery stage we can have requirements feasibility study planning design construct test and turnover so generally if the project is small and it's a low complexity project and we know what has to be done from start to end we use predictive life cycle now this kind of life cycle predictive which is more like a waterfall model might not be very relevant for big projects big projects where requirements are not clear up front it's very difficult to deliver them using predictive life cycle now let's see what are the challenges in a predictive life cycle or a waterfall model customer is able to see the final workable product at the end now it might be possible that you know when he actually sees the workable product the working product he may not like it for a big project let's say 6 months till before we actually show the turnover or the workable product to the customer what we have been doing we have been only showing him documentations and he he could only get a chance to see the product at this point and when he sees the product at this point so late in the project life cycle he may not be he may not be happy with the product so what happens he might outrightly reject the project or he might recommend some major changes to the product or a project to avoid this bigger projects are generally delivered incrementally in a phased manner <coughs> so this is iterative life cycle in iterative life cycle you deliver projects incrementally in phases now let's take an example here let's assume let's assume that a that you are doing a project that involves launching of a township and this township consists of low rise medium rise and high rise apartments instead of launching the whole township in a single go to mitigate your risks you would like to deliver the project in a phased manner in the first phase you can deliver low rise apartment in the second phase medium rise and in the third phase you can have a high rise apartment now the key benefit of uh, delivering a project in phases is first of all at the end of every phase you can review and retrospect you can review the performance of the project against the major variable you can do retrospection 
based on the learning from retrospection, you can take corrective and preventive action for the subsequent phase. For example, based on the retrospection, you can come out with a conclusion, what should I start doing in the next phase? What should I stop doing? What should I do more? What should I do less? Right? So this is iterative life cycle where the project is rolled out incrementally in phases. Now, sometimes even this might not work because the size of the phase in incremental life cycle is around three to four months. Sometimes we work in a turbulent business environment. In a turbulent business environment, the requirements keep on changing very often. When the requirements keep on changing very often, even this mechanism won't work. So what should we do? We need to devise a mechanism that will make us successful. Now, yeah. So what are the key issues, key problems, key challenges in a turbulent business environment? Since the environment is turbulent, at any point of time, in the project life cycle, customer can come with Changes, change in the requirement. Now we have two options here to deal with this situation. One option is to crib. What kind of customer is this? He keeps on coming with changing requirement. And the second option is to enable ourselves to respond to these changing requirements. Which is more apt to enable ourselves to respond to the changing requirements. Now, how can we enable ourselves to respond to customers changing requirement even late in a project life cycle? For this, we can use adaptive life cycle. Now, what do we do in adaptive life cycle? Adaptive means agile. Now, what do you mean when you say agile? Agile means being flexible. Agile means being flexible and possessing an ability to create and respond to change in order to make profit in a turbulent business environment. <coughs> now, in, now, what you do in adaptive is you decompose the phases further into short, short iterations and each iteration can vary from two to four weeks. Phases are further divided into small, small iterations of two to four weeks. And each iteration is called as sprint. And you will work very closely with the customer. Every, at the end of every sprint, you will come out with a potentially shippable product. You might not release, you might release at the end of every phase, however, you will come out with a potentially shippable product at the end of every sprint, which means every two to four weeks, you are showing a working deliverable to the customer. Now, when, when in every two weeks, you are showing a working deliverable to the customer, this means what? This means very quickly you are getting customer feedbacks. If you are getting customer feedbacks very frequently, you are making frequent adjustments. If you are making frequent adjustments, never ever in the project life cycle you will get a major change. Even if you get a change very late in the project management life cycle, you, can, you will be still enabled to incorporate the change. So this is adaptive life cycle. Please feel free if you have any questions. Uh, I have one. Yeah. If customer is coming with uh, so many change requests, so there is not not uh, question mark, no question mark on uh, principle study or in scope. See, there are certain environments where changes are very frequent. Generally, changes are inevitable in any project. But there are certain business environments that are highly turbulent. I'll give you uh, some examples here. If you talk about mobile phone industry, a mobile phone industry is very turbulent industry. 
changes comes frequently, new models are coming. As an example, see, just a year ago, you would see a feature uh, in every cell phone. The front cam camera would be around 5 megapixel. The back camera was around 20 megapixel. All of a sudden, a selfie trend came into picture. Now, most of the cell, cell phones are, they, they have very strong front camera like 25 megapixel, 20 megapixel or more. And their back camera is maybe 8 or 10 megapixel. So it's not the fault of the customer, it's a turbulent business environment. The market keeps on changing and we have to adapt to the changing needs of the market. That's why we have to follow this model. What is this backlog box? Yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, generally, the way we manage scope in the uh, in a uh, adaptive or agile project is through product backlog and through sprint backlogs. Product backlog consists of overall scope of the project, right? From the product backlog, based on the <coughs> priorities, a sprint backlog is evolved. Sprint backlog means scope of only one iteration. Whereas product backlog is overall scope. Why is it called backlog? Nothing is lagging back, so why is this backlog? No, backlog is nothing is it's a scope to be delivered. See, product backlog is a prioritized requirement of the overall scope of the project. Right? And the requirements will be delivered from product backlog. Requirements from based on the priority will have us requirements in sprint backlog from the Product backlog, right? And every iteration will be delivering potentially shippable product. Okay. 